Welcome to another 3D Buzz VTM. This time around, what we're going to be doing, hey, like if I have like slow motion, then suddenly snap into fast motion. What we're going to be doing this time around is taking a look at PHP and MySQL integration. This is issue number two. If you have not seen issue number one and you are a complete beginner to working with MySQL or PHP, I strongly recommend that you go to the site and download issue number one first because you may find yourself totally, totally lost. My name is Jason Busby, also known as Buzz. I'm the dude that runs 3dbuzz.com. And uh, I'm sitting here right now with somebody that a lot of you guys know as Jayhawk, and I know him as Logan, actually. Logan, how's it going? Going good. And um, we've got Angela far over on the side on the couch just kind of hanging out, kind of watching. She's waving to you guys right now. She doesn't have a mic. She's kind of mic shy. It's so hard to try to get her involved in all of this stuff. But that's only because she's so shy. Now she's sticking her tongue out at me. That's okay. So uh, any. That was a weird look. So anyways, um, she's just going to kind of hang out with us to, to watch what we're doing and some of the things we're going to be putting together. In this particular VTM, we're going to start pushing the envelope a little bit, wouldn't you say, Logan? Oh, yeah. I say things are going to get a little bit interesting. Uh, after the introduction, we're gonna, I'm just going to kind of give you a quick overview, and I'll get Logan to show you a few things. Um, we're going to start out with you know, a little introduction here, and from there we're going to move into how you can go in and create a user account in MySQL. Uh, kind of important to know if you want to kind of start securing some of your tables. Uh, from there, we're going to go into integrating PHP and MySQL, so we're going to start mixing the two together. Uh, from there, we're going to start getting a little more serious. We're going to write a counter script that just simply logs. Do we have that to show? Or yeah, let me load it up. I think we have some of these things in here that we can, yeah. So this page has been viewed nine times. There's actually a database or a table out there that's actually recording this. So each time he hits refresh, the page is just simply going to refresh with a new number because it's the number's being stored to a database, and then we're retrieving that number back out. Now, yes, a lot of you guys out there are going, simple, boring. <laughs> well, that's just the start of it. After we take a look at using or creating this real simple counter script, we're then going to move into – uh, working with for loops and arrays, and that's when things are going to get a little bit more interesting. Uh, we'll see how we can set these loops up and have code repeat itself over and over and over until con test conditions uh, fail. And we're going to take a look at arrays and how we can store data inside arrays and different elements, et cetera, et cetera, and how we can use loops to iterate through an array, which is pretty cool. And then once you get a good grasp of that, we'll then move into if statements. Did you have something you want to say, Logan? No. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, when we get into if statements, that's where we're going to show you how we can do some conditional testing, if you will, inside our scripts where we can basically see, you know, how many rows did we get returned? Did the user fill something out? Basically, it allows our script to ask questions, and, uh, and then we can react, you know, upon, you know, if it's true or false as a result. So uh, we'll go through if statements. Then from there, things will start to get a little more interesting as we get into post, get, and forms. Now, this is not an HTML course, so we're not going to get really involved in teaching you how to create forms. Uh, we will talk about it a little bit, so you'll kind of be able to follow along without any problem if you have no experience. I just wanted to kind of point that out real quick. But, um, but we're going to show you how we can actually pass data from you know, one web page to another web page and also how we can create a form that will submit data to another web page. And we'll actually have it submit data back to itself and then act upon that data, which is pretty cool. And I think we're going to get into string length and some other interesting right, functions right. when we get there. So, yeah, that'll be fun. Uh, from there, then it's time to actually put all of this stuff to good use. We're going to create a real guest book. Now, it's not the prettiest thing in the world for the simple fact that, um, you know, poor Logan's going to be coding live here. And, um, and I'll talk more about that in, in just a minute. But, you know, while he's in there and, uh, and, and typing and all, if I made him type tons and tons and tons of uh, HTML code, he would have probably killed me. So this is it right here. It's very basic. Uh, basically, it will allow somebody to go in there and type in a name, put in their email address, and leave some comments for you. So this is an actual project. It's very useful. When he submits this, it resubmits to the page. Down below, you can see everybody that's come in there, the date and the time that they were there, the comments they've left for you. And what's really cool is if you look at the name, if they actually supplied you with a an email address when they submitted their record, the name will then be uh, turned into an actual link and if they didn't supply you with a name, as you can see, as he's indicating there, there will be no link in the name. So, you know, it's just kind of showing you how to handle things like this. And also, you can see that our 
table, or excuse me, our rows are actually alternating colors. We've got a darker gray, lighter gray, darker gray, lighter gray. So we're going to show you how to set all that up, too, with PHP. That kind of gets us into the modulus command and uh, some stuff like that. So, um, so anyways, let's see. What else we got going on? Uh, after we get done with the guest book, then we're going to take things up yet one more notch. We're going to take a look at how we can create a stat tracker. Basically, it's a statistics system, if you will. This is not something you'd want to use for an extremely heavily trafficked site, somebody that receives thousands and thousands of uh, views a day. But, uh, you know, for giving you an understanding on how something like this could be put together, I think this is an awesome example that we're going to give you. Here it is right here. Again, the HTML code is nothing pretty to look at, but the functionality is all in place. Right now, we're receiving all sorts of information. We can see that there's been two unique IPs that have actually uh, viewed our various pages that we have. We actually create three mock pages, and we use our counter, or our excuse guest me, our, our guest book as well. Thank you. And, uh, and we add that into the whole mix. And you can see below the two unique IPs, it shows you the two IPs that have viewed them and how many pages or how many views we actually got from each of those IPs. And you can see that the 68.53, that's one that we actually uh, logged from another computer just to demonstrate that, uh, that other computers could get to it. And then up underneath that, we have pages. So it breaks down every page that's actually inside of our website, and it shows us how many times each of those pages have been viewed. And then we take it and make it one step more interesting by, if we go back up to the IP section, yeah, we actually turn each of the IPs into a link. And so uh, if you click on one of those, then what it's going to do is it's going to then break down when that person came in, what page it was he looked at. So this guy came in and looked at tracker.php first because we ordered this by the date time stamp. And we can actually watch, you know, where he walked through on the site. So he went from tracker, then he refreshed the tracker page, then he went to page one, he refreshed page one, then he went to page two, then he went on a link to page three, then back to two, then to one, then to three. And then finally we add the guest book in last, and he stayed in the guest book adding some stuff. So now if you go ahead and back back out real quick, Logan, go ahead and uh, click on the other one. You'll see the other guy just jumped in only for a second into the tracker thing just to see that it actually worked. So, um... And the, uh, the final part of that is we have all this data we're using to track numbers. We also we actually use that as a, a counter in itself, actually uh, putting that tracker doubled as a counter. Absolutely. So you can see at the bottom we're actually pulling from all that data, and that guy's increasing down there. So uh, I think we do some pretty neat things for an issue number two this time around. Um, look for the PHP MySQL VTMs to continue to become more and more complex. We're going to get into adding banner tracking stuff. If you, uh, if you have a site that you want to end up bringing advertisers into, uh, we're going to get into some of the PHP graphic things and also executing uh, applications that are stored on your server. Uh, we've got quite a few neat things that we can uh, explore. And I think issue number two right here is a very nice step into that direction. So um, with that, I've got one last thing that I want to explain. Most of you out there know who I am, and most of the time I'm the one that does the VTMs. But, you know, I'm just one guy, and right now we're, you know, we're picking up a lot of sponsors, and I've got particular applications that I'm responsible for generating VTMs for them. So what I'm going to do is Logan is now going to start helping me out with some of this stuff on the programming side so that I can stay focused on the 3D side. And in this case, Logan is going to be taking the lead on this particular VTM. Now, I still will be here. I will still be giving him a hard time and trying to fill the dead silent time while he's typing away by singing you songs. Actually, just kidding. But I will probably be talking about who knows what, random stuff probably. And, uh, again, it's just filling dead, quiet time. That's all. But, anyways, um, uh, Logan's going to do a wonderful job on this. And the bottom line, as long as we get this information across to you and we do it for free, that's what 3D Buzz is all about. And so with that, I would like to welcome you to issue number two, and let's get started. See ya.